Let me tell you something. Louis Gohmert gets it. That is a good congressman. I want to talk to you about fairness tonight because there's going to be a lot of talk tonight in the debates about fairness. It's a popular term this election cycle. The left often vilifies the wealthy for not paying their fair share. And they use that as justification for raising taxes on the rich. And they've hammered this talking point so much that voicing support now for a tax break for the upper class is darn near criminal. You'd fare better supporting cancer and not the cure for cancer, but actually supporting cancer than lowering tax rates on the wealthy. On the surface, the rich seem, you know, like it's logical to tax the rich more. I mean, why should somebody who already is rich and can't afford the tax hikes receive most of the benefits from the cuts? Today, I want to do what the media never does and go beneath the surface here, beneath the fair share catchphrase, and see if the perception of our tax code holds up to closer scrutiny. I'm going to use an illustration, and I want to um, use how... Americans overall tax burden currently stands to a hypothetical group of 10 friends that go out to a bar. These friends meet after work and they do it every night and they have just a couple of drinks. And we have them split the bill of $100. Okay? And they use the same progressive tax code that forces people to pay uh, fair shares. All right. So let's find out how it happens. These guys, these guys are the they're the these four are the ones that make the least amount of money. They go to the bar every night and they don't pay anything. The 10 friends, usually $100. Now here's using our tax code as a guide how the bill is divided up. The poorest pay absolutely nothing. You've got 1 2 3 4 0. Then you have the fifth person paying a dollar, 6, $3, $7, $12, 18 and then finally $59. Everybody pays a different amount. Okay? It shows that the middle class pays a little bit more and the upper class pays a lot. The uber rich guy pays the most, $59. Great. The richest guy paying the most, but he can afford it. Seems fair, right? Or is it? First of all, this is assuming that that's what these 10 friends agree on. This isn't assuming that they all go in and then somebody says, hey, Who's the richest guy here? Let me see how much you make. Let me see your pay stubs. And then they force this to guy to pay. This is 10 friends. But let's see what happens if the size of the bill gets discounted. Let's say somebody says a $20 discount. So instead of being $100, the total bill is $80. The poorest guy still pays nothing. Person one pays nothing. Person two pays nothing all the way down. But the remaining six people, how do they divide up the $20 discount? What's fair? If you divide that $20 that's get refunded, it's $3.33 per person. But they couldn't do that because person five and six would actually getting paid to drink. Five and six. The decision was to reduce each person's tab by roughly the same amount. So out of the $20, right, person five... Person five would get $1. Uh, person six would get $1. Person seven would get $2. Uh, person eight, who's currently paying $12 tab, uh, would get $3. This one would be $7, and uh, this one would be $9. Got it? That's how you divide up this break. Now, here's how... Here's how, it, here's how it works. The problem with this is, is um, a politician's going to walk in soon. You have 100% savings for this person. You have 33% savings for this. 28%, 25%, 22%, and 15% savings. Exactly half of the group paying nothing. And every single person benefited. Everybody seemed okay with this until the politician came in. Came into the room and said, hey... To person five. Hey, you know what? You only got a dollar out of that $20. And the rich guy in your group, he got $9. He's the richest guy in the world. He's the richest guy here. Why is he getting $9? You only got a dollar. They're allowing him to get even richer. He took more than any of you guys makes, and he makes the most. That's not fair, is it? Then he turns to these guys who got nothing but paid nothing. And he says, you didn't even get one penny of that $20. Well, the group begins to side with the politician and turns against the rich person. And they run him out of the group. They all feel really, really good about it because they've gotten rid of the greedy guy and the corruption of their group. 
The next night, as they always do, they go into the bar. And they are going to go celebrate the departure of the rich man from the circle of friends. And everything's great until the bill arrives. And they don't have enough to pay for it. In fact, they weren't even close. They couldn't even pay half the bill. They only had $30 of the $80 needed. Fairness. It's a nice catchphrase for politicians to win votes and pit people against each other. But it has nothing to do with the reality on the ground. And the reality is the rich are pulling more of their fair share. The CBO recently reported that 20% of the average American wage earners pay 70% of the tax burden, despite accounting for only 50% of all the income. The bottom 20% of American wage earners pay just three-tenths of a percent. Does that sound fair? But forget about fairness. Just for a second, does it sound like a good idea to kick the rich guy out of the group and leave everybody else to foot 70% of the tax bill? Ask the middle to low income earners in France. Because they're doing this. They just raised the top tax rate to 75%. And guess what the rich guys are doing? They're leaving the bar called France. Now, the people in France, because they're French, probably feel pretty good about themselves. Until they walk back into that bar tomorrow and get the bill.